bam, and just like that, now you've got more DeFi data than you ever know what to do with, and you're an expert in the DeFi Llama API. <laughs> Finance family, it's your other brother Adam Get Bags. You want to learn more about DeFi? Well, good, because I got a video for you today. We're going to be checking out the DeFi Llama API full tutorial. DeFi Llama is the largest TVL aggregator in decentralized finance and their data is fully open source and maintained by a team of passionate individuals and contributors from hundreds of protocols and their focus is on accurate data and transparent methodology that's according to the website is that true i don't know but we're going to be looking at a ton of data so here we go first thing we'll pop over to our trusty google google search DeFi llama api we've got the docs right here up top we're going to go ahead and start hitting all these endpoints Boom, I'm flipping over to the script here. All of my scripts are on my GitHub, so I'm gonna put my GitHub link in the description so you can follow along with the code here. Let's go first thing, we're gonna import our modules. Then we wanna come down here and assign our base URL. And then first thing we're gonna do is just start hitting these TVL endpoints. So first up, we've got this protocols endpoint here. For all of these endpoints, we're gonna be using Git requests. So we're gonna have our base URL and then we're just gonna append protocols. So if you look here, this is what our URL looks like when it's all appended. So that's kind of what's going on inside of this Git request. So once we make a Git request here, we have this response object and then we can look and see what is available to us. So first thing we can use the dear method to just go ahead and take a look. It looks like a bunch of different methods and attributes that we can use. And then this is gonna be our best friend in this video is the dot JSON. So if you do protocols.json, you can see it returns back just a ton of data. So we can see here that this is a list. So let's go ahead and access the first item in the list and it looks like it's giving us our protocol information for the Binance centralized exchange. So you can tell the first item in the list is a dictionary. So if we want to get the keys, we just have to append dot keys to that first item and then we can get an idea of what different data is available to us. So let's just take a look at chain TVLs and it looks like it's got our different values of chain total value locked. Uh, by chain here and it looks like it, this is for a specific protocol and then if you want to dig further into that you just can append here so this is another dictionary as you see here and then if you want to access a specific key you can again just add the key to the end here inside of those square brackets so if we want to clean that up and then put this into a data frame here. We're just gonna use pandas data frame dot from dict, and then we're gonna pass the JSON into there, and then we're gonna have a data frame here. As you can imagine, some of the cells in this data frame are gonna have different types. So this would be integer, you're gonna have strings, and they're probably gonna have some dictionaries as you see above. So if you want to get a better idea of what's going on in that data frame, if we dig into that data, we can see that there's 43 columns and then here are all of our columns. Now we can use this line of code here to review the different slugs that are available for each of the protocols. So here are the protocol slugs and we're gonna just define a slug here that we're gonna use in our next API request. So I've just adjusted this code here. So our slug is Ave and we're gonna be using this as our next endpoint. So here in the docs, we're going to go ahead and get historical total value locked of our protocol and breakdowns by token and chain. So there we're going to go ahead and make our git request. And if you take a look at the URL, you can see how we've just appended our slug to the end. It took a second. So you know, we're getting a bunch of data back. So if you look at protocol.json, it looks like there's just a ton of data returned back to us. So we can kind of dig in, look at the keys, see what data is going to be available to us. Again, we can look at the chain TVLs and this is going to be historical TVL data. So you can see that here it's a bunch of nested dictionaries and there's a list and then there's some more dictionaries. So you can see here in one of these dictionaries, we have a date and then we have the different tokens. So you can see that this is going to be time series data that's coming back. So we can go further into the data here and then we can look and see what keys are available. Let's take a look at Ethereum here. And on Ethereum, it looks like there's just, again, a bunch of time series data for each one. So you might have to just format that if you want to look at that. So again, we're just digging into the keys here and then we can take a look here at our TVL. Looks like we've got some more time series data here, but it's US dollar liquidity. And if you want to just dig in some more, we can take a look at the first item of the list. And then here, instead of looking at the first item of the list, we're looking at the last item in the list. And then we're just pulling out the date as our key and then we have our date here and all we're doing is this line is just assigning that to a variable and then here all i'm doing is demonstrating how to create a human readable date object from our timestamp so that's going to be helpful later in the script we're going to be using some timestamps 
Up next, we have historical chain TVL. It's gonna give us our historical TVL of DeFi on all chains. So we'll go ahead, we'll make our request to get historical TVL data. We'll see what comes back. And you can see here, it's time series data again. Now we're getting ready to hit another endpoint here. I'm gonna be assigning a chain name here. So I'm just going to our protocol data and then grabbing our chain name. And we're gonna be looking at Polygon here. Next, we're going to be taking a look at this endpoint historical chain TVL. It's by chain. So we're going to be looking at the Polygon chain. Let's go ahead and hit that endpoint. And then we're just going to send that data directly to a data frame. So here it is in order. And then we have our TVL on the other column. So next we have a simple TVL endpoint and it takes a protocol slug as you see here. And we're just adding that as our path. So we can go ahead and hit that endpoint and then it returns back a floating point number. And then another one we have here is our current TVL of all chains. So let's go ahead and hit that endpoint. So you can see there are absolute ton of data coming back. We'll just throw that into a data frame nice and neat. And then we can see here we've got six columns and then you can do whatever you gotta do from there. All right, we made it through TVL. Up next, we've got coins, which is our general blockchain data here. So they have a ton of detail about the methodology they use, and then they have some examples of how they query the prices. So you can see it's chain, colon, address, and they give you here an example. And then they also have a search with, which it's a little bit nuanced. That might come up later, maybe not. So here we're gonna put our base URL. So here we have our chain name. We're gonna assign a contract address and then we're gonna append everything together uh, with a semicolon in the middle. And I'm gonna create another variable here that's just gonna be a sample address that they use in the documentation. So let's go ahead and let's hit the coin price endpoint and take a look at the data here. Looks like we have our chain, our address, we have decimal information, a symbol information, price, a timestamp, and then a confidence score. So they do give you a good bit of information back. So here I'm just creating a timestamp that we're gonna use as a sample for us to get cross-sectional historical price data. So if we wanna go back in time and get some price data, we can do it by using a timestamp here in our URL. So here in the docs, we have prices, historical, timestamp, and then coins. So we're gonna get the historical price of token by contract address. You can see we've ran our get request. You can see our get request right here. And then you can see here is the data that it returns back. So here's the coin that we went for. Gives you decimal information, symbol, price, the timestamp. And as you can see, the timestamp's not an exact match. So it's very close, but you get the idea. And then again here, this is how you create a human legible date from a timestamp. So here I have basically the beginning of 2023. So here in this block, this is just an example. We have first a string date, and then we're gonna be creating a date time object by using this function here from our string date. Next, we're gonna create a timestamp by using this timestamp function and inputting our date time object. So then at the very end, now we have a timestamp. So this is an example of how to move through the different formats for dates. All this talking about dates, it's Saturday night. I'm over here making videos. I should be on a date right now. So this batch historical endpoint, it doesn't work. You can try it. It shows you here that it's not working. So you can just move on to the next one. So this next endpoint slash chart coins, quite a bit of parameters here. So here we have in our path, we have our coins, which is just our chain and our address. And then we have here our start timestamp, the end timestamp I've actually left out of the parameters. Next is the span. So this is the number of data points here. And then period is how long in between data points. And then search with is if there's not like actual price data available exactly at that point, you know, how much around does it look for price data? So if your coin's less liquid, this search with will help you kind of find prices, I guess, on either side of your timestamp. Don't quote me on that. You might want to test your data, but you get the idea. So let's go ahead and run this bad boy. So here, if we take a look at the data, we've got our chain, we've got our address, and we have a symbol here. And then we have our price data, which is living here. So if we want to get to our price data, we can use this code from below. And then that's going to give us our price data back in list fashion. You can convert that into a data frame. If you got a here is how we do it. You can just convert that to a data frame. And then here's what it looks like, very familiar and easy to use. And then of course, if you wanna convert your timestamps, you can use the conversion up here to have more legible date formatting. So we can of course plot out our price data. That's 10 periods, so that graph looks like trash, but you get the idea. So this other block of code, which I didn't talk about here, your data may truncate depending how you use span. So if I went to go ahead and grab 
a hundred rows of data, the data is gonna look much different. So all I mean here is if you queried a hundred time intervals, but you only got return 99, you may need to increase your search width to get that last piece of data. You might have to play around with it a bit to see what I'm talking about. Up next, we've got percentage change here. So slash percentage and then coins, you can see an example here. And I've also specified a few extra parameters just to be thorough. So what the endpoint sounds like is it's supposed to be the percentage change over this much of a period. So this endpoint is just supposed to return back the percentage change, I suppose, from your timestamp that you provide. Uh, look forward would be like the forward change and then with look for it as false, I think it should be the percentage change, you know, from back. So if this timestamp, you subtract four weeks from it, and it's the change over the last four weeks. Now, I think I played with this parameter and actually gave me the same data. So be sure to verify your data and just know how these queries work. So here we've got prices slash first slash coins. It gets us our earliest timestamp price record for the coin. I didn't include it, but it should be pretty straightforward how to hit that and you just throw your coins in at the end. Then we can move on to our closest block. All right, here I'm creating a timestamp called timestamp now. So we're gonna get our closest block to our timestamp and that's gonna give us our block height and our timestamp. Bam, wardrobe change. Up next, we've got our bridges endpoints here. So you can click into it. And then if you click try it out, you can tell that we've got a new URL at the beginning. So we're gonna just save that to a variable here as our base URL. And then we can go ahead and hit the first endpoint, which is slash bridges. And then it has a one parameter, which is include chains here. So we can just go through that data. We see it's a dictionary and some lists. So we can go into our bridges key and then we can see it has a list of individual bridge information. And then we can also explore the different chain informations here. So if we want to pull out a bridge ID, that's what this line of code here does. And then for our next endpoint here, we're doing slash bridges and then ID, which is a summary of bridge volume, volume breakdown by chain. So you can go ahead and grab out that data and take a look. And as you can see, it's a bunch of different data and it looks like most of the data is going to come in under your chain breakdown key here. And it looks like a bunch of data going to be living in that chain breakdown key. So that could be useful. Next, we have a slash bridge volume and then a chain. So this endpoint here is going to accept a chain name that we defined previously. And that's going to also accept a bridge ID that you can pull out from your bridges data up here. And then as you can see, it's a bunch of data and it's time series data that's stored in a list and it has dictionaries inside. So you can just format that as you need. Next, we have bridge day statistics. So it's 24 hour token and address volume breakdown for a specific bridge and it has a timestamp and then it has a chain. So here we have our timestamp that we defined earlier and then we have our chain and then we have our bridge ID. So we can run that, we can go ahead and take a look at the data. So this one came back blank, just probably there was no data on this um, 24 hour period here. All right, so that request came back blank, but if you change the parameters, you might be able to get some data back. Uh, and as you can, and you can see here, it takes parameters, timestamp, a chain, and an ID. Next, we have transactions slash ID. So you have to input a bridge ID and then start timestamp, end timestamp, source chain address, and a limit of transactions to return. So you can see this one actually has a lot of parameters there. Um, I've just defined some timestamps here, polygon chain, and then I've used our second, you know, coin chain and address string. So you can quickly take a look at what that URL actually looks like. So we have our timestamps there, and then we have our source chain, and then when we go to address and we use coins2, this is what the coins2 parameter actually looks like. It's the chain and the address separated by a semicolon. So if we take a look at this data, it's blank, of course. So I just modified the code slightly to fit the sample um, parameters here. And you can see that the data comes back. So the response will just come back blank if there's any discrepancies in your parameter and there's no data to be returned. So I just used the parameters from the docs and we get this data back here. Awesome, so we've made it through our bridges. Next, we have our volumes endpoints here, but this can be mostly decentralized exchange information. So, so you can click in here and see our first endpoint has a different URL slug, but this one is the same as the first URL slug. Then we have some parameters here. It's gonna list all of our decentralized exchanges. 
and volume summaries and data type information. So this endpoint has exclude data parameters, which we're gonna set those to false so we can get back all the data. And then you can see, you can change this parameter around here. So you can see our URL. So you can see the structure here. We're gonna go ahead and send that through. Now it just gives back just a ton of data. As you can see, it's a dictionary. So we're gonna to wanna to sort through the keys here. It looks like a bunch of keys. Let's go ahead and take a look at total data chart breakdown. So as you can see, it is a ton of data and it looks like time series data. So you could probably make a pretty rad chart out of that. Let's take a look at the protocols. Or we just took a look at the first item in the protocols list and we can see it gives you back a good amount of data. Let's take a look at all chains, see what that looks like. You could probably use that to sort through data chart breakdown. It gives us some 24 hour data here, probably just some volume data. And then we have a total 60 day to 30 day volume data. I just hit a couple different columns from our keys here. So it has different volume data here. And you can kind of just go to that, see what you need and it has some rate of change uh, in volume as well. So go ahead, have fun with that. Up next, we've got overview slash dex slash chains. So dex with summaries of the volume and data type, but you can filter by chain. So you can see in our URL here, I'm specifying a chain name and I'm also setting these to false so we can get back the most data. All right, as you can see, a good amount of data coming back. We can kind of just look through the keys and see what we might want to investigate. You can see the keys are very similar to our previous dex overview next we have summary dex protocol so we can get a summary of dex volume with historical data but you know what i don't see it in my script so it looks like this endpoint isn't working so we just tried a query there it didn't go through so on to the next one here we have overview slash options so this can be our options dex here and again very similar format with exclude parameters we're going to go ahead and include the data so again it looks like very similar keys going to be available to us let's take a look so the keys look very similar the bulk of the data in this request is probably going to be living inside of total data chart and total chart breakdown so let's quickly take a deep dive we can dive into protocols here you can take a look at the information from the first protocol there so has you it's options decks that we have here. We can just get a quick idea how many protocols are available. So there's four options protocols that are listed here. So if we want to take a look at where the bulk of the data from this request is coming from, we can look at total data chart breakdown. So here's the key total data chart. So it also has a ton of time series data. And then the other bulk of the information is going to be in that total data chart breakdown. So this next request here is our overview options by chain. So you can filter volume by chain. And I'm just going to specify the chain name here. And so I specified Arbitrum chain. So then we can see what kind of data we get back here. It's going to be very similar, I'd imagine, as far as keys. Um, so you can see here, the keys are going to be very similar, but this one's going to be filtered by chain on Arbitrum here. Awesome. Then last we have slash summary options protocol here. So this is going to be getting a summary of options, text volume, historical data, but it's going to be by protocol. So here we're going to create a variable called options protocol, and that's just going to be basically the name of the protocol, but you can get that from our dex by chain data. You'll probably get it from the summary data as well. And then here we're going to take a look at our options summary data, see what that comes back. Again, you can see it's time series data by chain and then by protocol here. So we look at the keys, it looks like a couple new information. And then again, we have our total data chart and total chart breakdown. It's gonna be probably where our time series data is living. So you can see here some new data, but then also we have our time series data, which is gonna be living in these variables here and then some other information for us. All right, congrats. If you made it this far, give yourself a high five. Is that how you give yourself a high five? Anyways, up next, we've got our stable coins endpoints here. So we got slash stable coins. See, so it has a parameter here. And you can see the URL here is different. So we're going to go ahead and just define our base URL here and then go ahead and hit this first endpoint. So what do you know? It's a ton of data. Again, here we have our keys. Let's take a look. Peg the assets. Let's go in there. See how many. See how many we have a list of 115 so here we have the tether at the top of the list looks like we have a good amount of keys available to us so let's we can just kind of scroll through this amount of data so we can take a look at the keys here it looks like we have some circulating supply data here and then we have different chains 
and it looks like it probably amounts that is circulating here so you can check that out so if you want to pull some basic data out you can pull the name out by using the keys there and then of course you can use other keys to pull out other data this one looks like a ton of nested dictionaries it looks like it's going to give you some circulating supply information based on the chain so each stable coin also has a stable coin id so you can go in here and you can get your stable coin id so one is going to correspond to the first item in the list which was tether so here we have a stable coin id which you can pull the id out so the first item in the list actually has an id of one coincidentally and we're going to be using that for our next endpoint which is going to be stable coin charts which is going to give us a historical market cap summary so it looks like a bunch of time series data here and we can just quickly take a look at the first item in the list there and so this is what our historical time series data is going to look like you can just reformat that as you need i'm getting ahead of myself but next we've got stablecoin charts and then so we've got our chain here and then we've got stablecoin id so you can look at stablecoin chart by chain and again it's going to be some time series data in there looks like some dictionaries inside of a list so we can look at the first item of the list and then we have here our time series data up next we have slash stable coin slash asset so historical market cap and chain distribution of a stable coin so we need to provide a stable coin id so bang we go in there oh shit not sure where i got derailed there but this endpoint slash stable coin slash asset is not working if you want to test it out yourself you can just execute here on their website and then you can see back it's unable to fetch so moving on to our next endpoint stablecoin chains it's a 502 so it should work so when i wrote the script this endpoint was working but it's not working now anyways here's the code here if you wanted to take a look at that but we're going to keep moving on up next we're going to be looking at stablecoin chains here get current market cap sum of all stable coins on each chain and we'll take a look at what that looks like so it looks like a good bit of chain data here and then we can just take a look at the first item in the list so here we have stablecoin data by chain and last we have slash stablecoin prices which is going to be historical prices of all stable coins so as you can see here, it's some time series data. So you're gonna need to parse through the list and then there's dictionaries within that list. So if we look at the first item in the list, there we are, we can see time series style data with our different stable coins. And then if we wanna go into the price data, we can see here and then we, if we wanna access a specific value. You can access the key like this and then it has our price here making good progress here onto the yields endpoints we have slash pools and then let's check it out it looks like our url is going to be different so we're going to need to assign a different base url here we're going to retrieve the latest data for all pools including enriched information so here if we take a look at the pool data looks like they've got a dictionary so we can take a look at the keys see what data is available to us status and data so we'll go into the data here. How did you know we wanted to go into the data? Looks like another list. So it's a lot of data. It's almost 12,000 pools. So let's take a look at the first pool and you can see the information here. There's a lot going on. So I'm gonna let you sort through that, but we can go ahead and pull out the pool ID because that's gonna be useful in the next endpoint here. We have slash charts and then pool by pool ID. So here's the pool ID and you can kind of see it. It's right here. So we're hitting that key and then grabbing the pool out. So we wanna take a look at that data there. So it looks like a good bit of data and it has some timestamp information. So let's take a deeper dive. We have again, status and data as the keys. We can go into data and then it has here a list of dictionaries here and it has some timestamp information. So again, time series data available to us and it looks like it has some yield data available to us as well so here if you want to go right into the data we have another dictionary there and then you can just access them by the keys so for so next we have the abi decoder we have slash fetch slash signature getting the abi for a function or event signature and it has some default parameters and i'm definitely going to be using the default parameters in this example and as you can see here we also have a different url so we're going to assign our new base url and then i'm going to use the default parameters from the documentation for demonstration purposes because you know what this is uh this is above my pay grade 
this API is pretty great. They have a lot of data coming out here. So here we have our response and then we dig into the keys, has function and events. We can dig into functions here. And then obviously here we have some more keys that are available to us. This is probably actually very useful. I just have no idea what's going on. So you can continue to dig down and grab out some of the functions that are available probably to the smart contract and then uh, different events that you know have probably occurred inside the smart contract. Look, it's above my pay grade. I'm gonna be knowing what's going on here in no time flat. So I ain't even tripping about that. I know I might've just ran through this, but this, this part that I'm highlighting here, this is a key. So here we've just dug all the way through all this data. If this was looking confusing to you, right? So this piece of code right here, if that was looking confusing to you, all that is, is a key. So here I'm give, grabbing the keys but I'm turning all the keys into a list and then I'm just grabbing the first item out of the list of keys. So this is actually a key that we're using to access our data. Next, we've got slash fetch, slash contract, slash chain, slash address. So here is what it does. I'm gonna be using our default parameters from the documentation to go in here. And as you can see, it's working like a charm. And again, you can just go into the dictionary here to grab the data that you need. Last but not least, we've got fees and revenue. So first we've got overview slash fees, and this is gonna be a list of protocols and summary of their fee and revenue and some other data there for us. So this endpoint is gonna be using our base URL from the very beginning of the video. And then we have our parameters here. So I've set this to false and set this one to false so that we can get back all of the data that's available. And of course, as you imagine, it's just gonna be a ridiculous amount of data. So let's go ahead and go through the keys. Looks like, again, some very familiar keys here. So we can go into our total chart data breakdown. And then if we wanna just go to the first item in the list, we can see here it has time series information and then it has in a dictionary here looks like some different protocols next we've got slash overviews slash fees and then by chain so probably going to be very similar information here but we're going to be specifying a chain name as you can see there we specify the chain name and then we can just quickly see what that data looks like let's go into the keys so if we can see you look at the keys it's going to be very similar keys here so imagine the format and the data are going to be very similar you can kind of just go through that at your discretion last but not least we've got slash summary slash fees by protocol so we can list our protocol here and i have just used the default parameters to go through that we can take a look at the data again here we are a bunch of data what a surprise a bunch of data and then we have our keys here again very similar a little bit of different information but you've kind of seen these before then if you run total data chart breakdown you can see just a monolithic slab of time series data there for you to use bam and just like that now you've got more DeFi data than you ever know what to do with and you're an expert in the DeFi llama api if you love the content come join the finance family subscribe to the channel you can always buy me a coffee to support the work here watch out for those red candles let's go get these bags